Amen. That, that's your work, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. He's a funeral director here in the city. We're happy to have him with us this morning. He's been here before. I was not aware of, the, of his employment, but uh, in our conversation this morning, he mentioned that. May God bless you, Rick, as you bring the message. Morning. 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 Okay. Can you hear me okay? No. Yeah. Yeah. No? You got the speaker on? Yes, I do. Let me double check. Yeah, it's on. Oh. It's on. It's on. It's, on. No. No. it's not on. Oh, well, the light's green. It's on, right? Yeah, but something is something is up. The light's it's on. Working. The volume turned up? No, I don't know where the volume's at. Nothing works on the bottom. Which one? Okay, we can turn the volume up. We getting better? Or am I just yelling? <laughs> just yelling. Okay. I'll just use the mic up here. Yeah. yeah. Right. <coughs> Gonna kill me. I'm highly ADD. You know. You know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. God bless you. Okay, is this better? Yeah. Better. Yeah. All right. Good morning, church. Good morning. And happy Sabbath. I am so happy and actually very humbled to be here today. I was telling uh, Brother Bushdell, we were in the room adjacent here. And does anybody remember when this church was, the Asian church when we first started? Was it 1970, something like that? Because I remember in 1971, being in this room with the FAA choir, and we came and sang here for dedicating the uh, sanctuary. So I just gave away my age. <laughs> and now my dad wasn't a cute kid. But it is an honor to be here with you all. Um, we just heard the, the scripture read, and actually we could just have prayer and go to potluck. <laughs> Two verses in Matthew, three verses in Matthew, very powerful, very deep. In fact, you could do a week of prayer on those two verses. And and before I get started, I, I'd like to pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for the gift of Jesus. Father, I ask that you take this broken, weak man. Speak through him. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 In the text, it says Jesus had just come down from the mountain and multitudes were following him. Before we get into that, I, I want to get into the disease of leprosy. It starts out with little white spots. Then it grows. And it actually will blister your lungs. And you start to have lesions and sores. And body parts literally start falling off. It's not a pretty picture. It is not a pretty picture. Your, very, your, your whole physical being is very lethargic, very tired. You can hardly talk because your lungs are filled with blisters. That's why this story is so incredible. And within the Jews, leprosy was not a good thing to have. It had a stigma when it was leprosy. What sin did you commit? What sin did your fathers commit that you are stricken by God? And when you walked down the street, you had to unclean, unclean. Now, if that were true today, what am I going to walk down the street? I'm an idiot. I mean, what, 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 what do we do? No, seriously. Imagine walking down the street, letting people know what your deficiencies are. That'd be an eye-opener, actually. We ought to try that one day. Huh. 
But there's shame involved with leprosy. It was more than a physical disease. It was shameful to have leprosy. What bad thing happened in your life that you have these putrid sores, digits off? One of the most emotional things I ever saw in my life, and we have a mission, I believe, is in Miramar, and there's a leper colony there watching the missionaries wash and clean the stubs. They did it in such a loving, kind way. It just brought tears to my eyes. So imagine, and, and the Bible doesn't give the leper a name. They call him the leper. I find that very interesting. Because we're going to be focusing on his leprosy. And, and the Bible tells us Jesus has come down the mountain and there were what? Multitudes. What does that mean? Two or three people? Many. Oh, many. There were like a lot of people. What possessed, in, in fact, I'm, I'm going to give the leper a name. It's just so much easier. We're going to call him Bob. Bob the leper. What possessed Bob, number one, to look for Jesus? Number two, to face that crowd with his shame. And number three, to speak. Why would he do that? He would have been better off curled up on the side of the road somewhere. Because as soon as he <clears throat> announced himself unclean, you can hear the crowd murmuring. He's a leper. He's unclean. He's stricken by God. I wonder what his dad did. I wonder what his mom did. It has to be something really bad. But he didn't care. He faced it. And, and, and just the way it's written, even written in the Greek, this man was bold. But in his boldness, in his step to Christ, one of the steps understanding our need for a Savior. If we don't understand our need for a Savior, either for healing, to be healed spiritually, to be healed physically, to be healed mentally, unless we take that first step, nothing's going to move. Nothing's going to happen. So here's Bob the leper. At this point, he was so sick and tired of being sick and tired, he doesn't care. Anybody here sick and tired of being sick and tired? <laughs> Amen, I am. I'll tell you, I absolutely am. That he approached Christ. And how did the leper, number one, know that Jesus was going to be there? How did leper number two know that Christ would heal him? Period. Because the ministry of Christ was not to the Pharisees, was not to the scribes, but to the publicans and wine doers, as the Pharisees themselves announced. To the poor, to the downtrodden, to the sick. So he goes, yeah, I find this amazing, very, I love this conversation, very short to the point. He gets before Jesus, gets on his knees, very worshipful, and asks him, Lord, are you willing? I'm going to repeat that, very important.
exercise, you reach out. Christ reached out to us, number one, to woo us into salvation, and he reached out on the cross. So why can't we, in the fashion of Jesus, reach out and touch someone? That's who we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And when Jesus shows us, we have, these, we have all these different snapshots of Christ that shows us who and what we're supposed to be. And reaching out and touching is very important. I, I saw a sign on the door as I was uh, waiting to come in. Maximum occupancy. What is it? 159, I believe. On the front door. Brother, sister, beloved, if we would reach out and touch somebody, we'd have maximum, maximum occupancy. And reach out and touch him as Christ touched him. The, the stigma was leprosy, and, and I was so amazed that Jesus, being a Nazarene, would touch his leprosy. He was unclean. Jesus was a Nazarene. Not only a Nazarene, he was a Jew. You don't touch anything unclean. You just don't do it. But Jesus, and I just might shout on this one, didn't care how putrid the man was, didn't care about the stench, the ooze, he reached out and what? Touched him. The leper. And that, that act alone should make us think I should reach out. Christ didn't ask him if he was an Adventist. Christ didn't ask him if he was vegan. Christ didn't ask him if he paid tithe. Christ didn't ask him anything other than the touch and be cleansed. And, and everyone has a leprosy in our life. I mean, it could be sickness, it could be sin, it could be a horrible event that just zaps your energy and, and makes you weak and makes you doubt God. Why, why, why? Two years ago, and I want to share this with you, sometimes it's hard for me to share. Um, my oldest son was killed in a car accident.
I Y. Had, I had the sore of grief. I had the loss of a digit, but the loss of a son. I had the stench of death. And as I wrestled and wrestled with the Lord, I couldn't make any heads or tails or just couldn't figure out why. Well, God is good. Amen. Amen. And actually, it's almost two years ago to the day. <clears throat> Early in the morning, I, I just couldn't stay in the house anymore. I walked outside. And to the east, at sunrise, there was this thin golden band. Then I knew. I had no questions. He is sovereign. God is sovereign. And when I get to heaven, I will find out. And that morning, God touched me. And cleansed me. From that root of bitterness. He cleansed me from grief. He cleansed me from doubt. Amen. So, as Christians... And we can label us if they have us that we do worship on the Sabbath and we do believe in the second coming. What is it in your life that needs to be cleansed? Is it an attitude? Sometimes there are people they should have, instead of giving them a name, just call them a prickly pear. You can't have a conversation. You can't be loving. You can't. But you know what? Jesus touched them. He touched them. The most amazing thing that happens in this whole scenario is the reaching out and touching of the unclean. And we need to be aware that we ourselves are unclean. If it weren't for the righteousness of Christ. And what did the leper do to clean himself? What did he do? Nothing. All he did was come before the Lord. It says he kneeled down and worshipped and asked, Lord, are you willing? Is the Lord willing? Amen. Is he willing? Amen. You know, we, we look rest of the story and we see Jesus on the cross he was willing unto death and that willingness was for me a sinner a leper putrid with the stench of death on me and here he reached out and touched me from the cross That's the love of God. And that's the willingness of Christ. And the boldness that the leper had to say, are you willing? And Jesus immediately said, yes, I am willing. I'm so hung up on this, I can't even tell you. As a follower of Christ, 
we need to be willing. Willing to do what? Humble ourselves. Humble ourselves. Willing to do what? Reach out and touch. To love, to heal, to hold. As Jesus did. There's someone in here today that needs that healing. And all you gotta do is ask him. Because he is willing. You know, sometimes we need to get a picture of what that looks like. And if you're looking for healing, if you're looking for restoration, is there if there's a, a favorite sin you're hanging on to, whatever it is, he is willing. And what it looks like is this. One of my favorite chapters in the Bible. And I can almost say that about every, every chapter. My favorite, my favorite. It all has a place. Uh, Psalm 103. And if you will, you want to turn there with me, please? Because I kind of think this is what Bob the leper was feeling after he was touched. I, uh, I'm going to give you a minute to turn there. About three months ago, I usually on Sabbath evening, Friday night, I like stargazing and looking at the Restored, redeemed. Redeemed by the touch of God. The touch of Christ. And, and as Christians, guys, you know, we go through what we go through, and we go through it, and it's all good. We learn our theology. We learn our doctrine. We learn our prophecy, and it's all beneficial and it's all what we need but even before we do any of that we better be reaching out and touching someone's leprosy because Jesus has promised us power
I just come in after church on Sabbath? He goes, yeah, the more the merrier. Come on, you know. He had no, no clue, no issue. And I just stood at the back of the chapel. Nobody else around me just observing. All of a sudden, the dad walks right towards me, looks at me right in the eye, and asks me, did God do this? I said, okay, God, I know why I'm here now. <coughs> and I'm ready to give up on God. I knew exactly how he felt. Exactly how that man felt. And I just shared with him what I went through. And I shared with him about the second man. He was a Christian, a good Baptist Christian. And I shared with him about the second coming. And I shared with him how God lost a son. I lost a son. You lost a daughter. We're in the same club. We know. Well, Term. And he said, Greg, well, you, the baby was going to be cremated on Monday, which was my day off also. He says, Greg, will you stand with me at the cremation? And I thought, oh, Lord, this is one thing I don't want to do. I'm not willing, but I said yes. So here comes Monday morning, and here comes the family. tell you how good he is. The mom and dad just turned and walked out. I didn't have to sit and witness anything. Thank you, Jesus. My point, my point being that it's still very emotional for me. If Jesus Christ the creator of this universe, Jesus Christ, who hung and died on a cross for our leprosy. Why should we be willing to reach out and touch? Who are we? Who do we think we are? Who do we think we are? We're all children. We're all filthy rags, but yet we are righteous with the robe of Christ's righteousness. Amen. Now, Jesus 
reached out, touched him, and said, immediately, immediately, immediately. I love that word, immediately. What does it mean? I'll get to it. Uh, right now. Right now. Jesus didn't say you have to be vegan. Jesus didn't say you got to do this, you got to do that. Jesus touched that man. And cleansed him, what? Immediately. That's power. Also, and the man got us a, a physical cleansing. Now, sometimes we need a spiritual cleansing. True. Spiritually, sometimes we get fed all this information from all these angles and all these.